You see, chaps, it will trickle out. Freaksily, of course, but the tom and the shorty of it is he was in his bardic memory low. All the time he kept on treasuring with condign satisfaction each and every crumb of trek talk, covetous of his neighbor's word, and if ever, during a Munda Conversazione commoted in the nation's interest, delicate tippets were thrown out to him touching his evil courses by some well-wishers, vainly pleading by scriptural arguments with the opprobrious papist about trying to raise up for the kaitos of the thing, scallywag, and be a man instead of a dim scrounger. Dish it all. Such as, pray, what is the meaning, Salsi, of that continental expression, if you ever came across it? We think it is a word transpiciously like, can I... Or... Did you anywhere, Kennel, on your gullible's travels, or during your rural troubadouring, happen to stumble upon a certain gay young nobleman whimpering to the name of Low Swine, who always addresses women out of the one corner of his mouth, lives on loans, and is furtive-free yours of age? <laughs> Without one sigh of haste, like the supreme prick he was, and not a bit sorry, he would pull a vacant landlubber's face, root with Airwaker's pensile in the outer of his lausher, and then, lisping, the prattle paid Parnella, to kill time, and swatting his dead best to think what under the canopies of Jensen's crest would any decent son of an Albio gentleman who had been to an university think, let a lent it a hint, and begin to tell all the intelligentsia admitted to that tamalisi, samtalesi, conclamazione, since still and before physicians, lawyers merchant, belfry politicians, agricolas manufraudurers, sacristanes of the pure river society, philanthropics lodging on as many boards round the pan aesthetic at the same time as possible, the whole lifelong swine story of his entire low cornai existence, abusing his deceased ancestors wherever the sods were, and one moment taro booming great blunder guns Pop! about his far-famed fine Papa Moore, Mr. Hum Hum, whom history, climate, and entertainment made the first of his sept and always up to depth though even zears how many fines he faces, and another moment, vis on Versas, crocking three cheers ha! for his rotten little ghost of a peppy beg, Mr. Himmy Shimmy, a blighty, a reeky, a lighty, a scrapey, a babbly, a ninny, dirty seventh among thieves and always bottom sawyer, till now one knowed how homely homey could be giving unsolicited testimony on behalf of the absent, as glib as Eve's water to those present, who meanwhile, with increasing lack of interest in his semantics, allowed various subconscious smickers to drivel slowly across their fissures, unconsciously explaining, for ink stands, with a meticulosity bordering on the insane, the various meanings of all the different foreign parts of speech he misused, and cuttlefishing every lie unshrinkable about all the other people in the story, leaving out, of course, foreconsciously, the simple wharf and plague and poison they had cornered him about, until there was not a snoozer among them but was utterly undeceived in the heel of the real by the recital of the rigmarole.